The Mysterious Visitor This extract is taken from H. G. Wells's novel, The Invisible Man. The novel is based on the story of a scientist who, having discovered the secret of invisibility, tries it on himself. To look like a normal person, he moves around with a bandaged face and wears a heavy coat and gloves. The visitor had returned to his room at the coach and horses at about five in the morning. He wanted food, but no one answered his angry shouts as no one wanted to be near him. It was a special day in the town and people had put up little shops in the road. Men and women were dressed in their best clothes. Children played on the streets and the people were all happy. Some of the young men had joined the little group at the coach and horses, where the people talked about the robbery at the vicar's house. The people at the pub were afraid to go into the man's room. They could hear him as he walked backward and forward, shouting at God and breaking bottles. At about twelve, the visitor opened his door and shouted for Mrs. Hall. Mrs. Hall! After a short while, Mrs. Hall came up with a paper, saying how much he needed to pay. But the man only demanded to know why he had not been given any food. He grew more angry as his landlady argued with him about his bills and offered to give her some money. Mrs. Hall immediately demanded to know as to where he had got his money from and many other things before she got any food for him. The visitor lifted his hand in anger and asked her to stop. Stop! You do not understand who I am or what I am. I will show you. By God, I will show you. He pulled out his nose and dropped it into her hand, leaving a black hole in the middle of his face. As people in the drinking room cried out in surprise, he lifted his glasses, pulled off his hat and started pulling at his false hair and bandages. Mrs. Hall cried out in fear and left the room and people started running to get out of the door. The man they all had waited to see was a man without a head. People on the road heard the shouting and gathered at the door to try to see what was going on. A small group tried to help Mrs. Hall, who had collapsed again. There was a noise from behind and the people saw Mr. Hall, the pub owner, and Mr. Wadgers, the blacksmith, coming towards the pub with Mr. Bobby Jaffers, the policeman. They had come to take the visitor to prison. Mr. Hall was the first at the visitor's room and he pushed open the door for Jaffers to take him. That is the man! The man without the head, who had some food in his hand, gave an angry exclamation. What the devil is this? Jaffers told the visitor that he would be sent to prison. On hearing this, the visitor jumped back and put the food down. As Hall lifted a sharp knife from the table, the visitor pulled off his left glove and threw it into Jaffer's face. Jaffer's held him by an arm, while Hall pushed the knife towards Vajar's. Jaffer's told Hall to get the visitor's feet. Hall tried to obey, but was kicked in the ribs, making him lose his hold. But Vajar's fled, knife in hand and the visitor held Jaffers, pinned to the ground. Mr. Huckster, a store owner, and another man came to help Jaffers. The visitor said that he would stop. He looked strange without any head or hands, for he had pulled off his other glove too. He began to take off his coat and shoes. Huckster put out his hand, and it hit the man in his eye. He gave an exclamation and said that he was all there, but that he was only invisible. He tried to argue that being invisible could be no reason for the police to arrest him. Jaffers pointed out that he was being arrested because the priest's house had been robbed that morning and all the evidence pointed towards him. As they talked, the invisible man collapsed into the chair and quickly pulled off his shoes, socks and pants. Then he jumped up and pulled off his coat. Jaffers at once understood what was going to happen and tried to hold on to the man's shirt. But a shirt sleeve hit him strongly in the face 
and he fell backward. He moved his stick through the air, trying to hit the man, but it only hit Teddy Henfrey's head. There was utter confusion, and all of them tried to hit, and were instead hit in turn. Vajas opened the door to leave, but no one was able to move through the narrow doorway. Jaffers did not stop hitting with his stick, and feeling a body between himself and Huxter, he held on to it. The invisible prisoner held Jaffers round the neck, and the whole group slowly made its way out of the front door and down the steps of the coach and horses. The policeman tried to cry for help, but was not able to breathe. He collapsed under the others, and his head hit the hard road. At last, the prisoner was free of Chaffers's hold, and through it all, he was able to run away. The people ran like the wind to all parts of the town, and Jaffers was left lying on the ground, his face looking up at the sky.